I, would, I always high. forget that we play when we do it from home. We play the whole just, song. Yeah, it's such a long song. Remember to keep your mic close to your mouth. It already is, but I'm just telling you. Yeah. There's been a lot of reminders this week yeah. about. like who's the wife here you know yeah it's who's like, nagging who god that's so weird can you scoot over a little babe sure Your whole butt's taking up the couch it's just right there in the middle okay. um welcome back everybody wow you guys wow. it's an old school ep we are uh recording from the bunker we're we're back in the casa and uh we are back from the dr or really um america within the dr the hard rock resort yeah, we went to the Hard Rock Resort and Casino, and we saw almost, I would say, close to zero culture. Mm-hmm. I would say the most culture we saw besides the airport was the ride to the um, Swim with the Dolphins I've seen Aquarium. Yeah, I've seen more culture in the fancy mall in my hometown, actually. I think you could honestly learn more about the DR on our block than how much we learned. In know. the DR. Yeah. Um. So... Also, guys, if you can hear sort of vague soul cycle music in the background, I want you guys to know it's because the uh, the bros are out on their rooftop actually measuring the circumference of their balls. Yeah, it's it's kind of peak party rocking season, and um, the jock jams are flowing. They're, uh, they're measuring their ball sacks. Weird way to go about it, but I guess the loser... Gets thrown off the roof. Yeah, it's a white. I heard them talking about the rules. It's white claw summer, mm-hmm. and uh, there's a new flavor apparently. And it's white boy. Yeah. It, there's white boy white claw. White boysenberry. It just tastes. It tastes like um, paper. Yeah, it's good. Mm-hmm. I haven't had it, but I hear good things. I hear it's like chewing on the bottom of someone's brand new shoes. Ooh, that um, sounds yummy. Yeah, and. Uh, <laughs> I feel good about this episode already. If you guys are wondering uh, if you're watching the episode on YouTube, on YouTube, if you're wondering why I'm wearing this hat, it's because um, I've actually been selected uh, <laughs> to make the biopic for the Jamiroquai movie. And <laughs> yeah. I'm just kind of getting into character. He's really going to just like, um, not Robert Downey Jr. What's Daniel Day-Lewis. Daniel Day-Lewis. Other, this. Th- other three name guy. Yeah. Other uh, alliteration name. Uh, wait, Robert Downey Jr. has no alliteration in it whatsoever. I don't know why I said that. It just sounds like, it just flows so well that you would assume. Yeah, yeah, I think know? so too. Do you hear a slight beeping? No, you're having a stroke. A weird kind of stroke. I do hear an ambulance far in the distance. Maybe it's coming to save me. Um, it's actually coming because uh, the pod is dangerously good today. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> they said our our levels are too high. Yeah. They said, uh, you guys need to tone it down. Someone's going to get hurt. I can't wait for somebody to complain about this episode being too loud. That's what... You don't hear that? No. Sounds like an alarm clock. Nope. Wait. Yep. Yes, I do. do. Okay. I do hear it. There I do go. hear it. What is going on? No idea. We're just all dying. Is and Joanne dead? I don't know. It's coming soon. It's my pacemaker. That's oh, right. Oh, great. Perfect. Um, so, you guys, we have uh, a couple announcements. The VI Bistro is June 27th at 6 p.m. If you are a VI Beach member, you can uh, you can write that one down, put it in the old calendar. Mm-hmm. Um, 6 p.m. EST, I should say. Mm-hmm. And uh, Andy and I will be hosting that from where Charleston, South, Charleston Carolina. South Carolina. Thank South you Carolina. very much. I know what's in my calendar. Why don't they just combine the Carolinas? It's at this point, they're it's the annoying. same. It they are the same. Matter. I mean, I know if you're from the Carolinas, you like know the distinctions. Yeah, but it's just like it's just confusing for you're everybody. You're not big enough for it to matter. Yeah, same with like North Dakota, South Dakota. Like you're Dakota. Just link up. Just be yourself. Are there? Any, there's only two broken states, right? No, there's probably. Uh, there's oh, probably there's West one. Virginia. West yeah. Virginia, you can stay your own, but you should probably rename yourself because West Virginia should have a different name. It should just be called like Twofers. It should be called uh, whatever the place is called in uh, Handsmaid Tale. Handsmaid Tale. Gilead. Yeah. Because they're backwards there, folks. (laughs) 
Okay. Okay. Um. So we got a hell of an episode for people. We here. have a hell of an episode because we did go on. A, wait, do we have any more announcements? Anything else? Well, I guess I could just say hi to our new um, our new Patreon members. Our new Patreon members. Uh, I would read some reviews, but uh, you guys really fucking dropped. Drop the ball on that. You drop the pelota. We got no new reviews this week. So uh, if you have some time, head over to iTunes, leave us a review, and uh, and make sure you subscribe if you if it's your first time listening to the podcast. You have entered a world of fun. Yeah. And uh, also, I, if we I get bet you thought I was you, gonna say pain, but it's fun. If we get enough of you guys, we can get a second ring light. We're really excited about that because then Mouse can stop using ours for whatever she does when the door's locked. For her pussy shots. Um, Jorge Martinez, welcome to the beach. Aloha, buddy. Aloha, Jorge. Bienvenidos. We love seeing you. Uh, longtime Instagram fan, now officially a patron, Megan yeah. Schuler. Thanks so much for joining. Welcome, the, Megan. The beach. Grab your towel. It's got those nice blue and white lines on it because you know it's the resort. Mm-hmm. And then finally, Luke, you better correct me on this. Coferl? Uh, Keferl? Luke. L- what? Where is it? Loke. Luke. Luke. That's It's Luke. Luke. Sorry, I was combining sure the last name and the first <laughs> name. Luke Kaferi. Kaferl. I can't see anything. Keeper all. All right. Well, anyways, you're Luke and you're at the beach. We don't care about last Welcome, names. Welcome, Luke. Uh, pull up a chair. We will sell you a timeshare. Um, we are selling timeshares on the beach now. That is actually something that I do want to talk about. We went to the Hard Rock and uh, everything's paid for. We paid them a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's all inclusive. Never done an all inclusive before. I haven't either. So First timer. I'm excited. We got a little armband. Even though we don't drink, we're getting our money's worth. We're drinking multiple coffees. They're bad. That's what I loved about it is that they put wristbands on us like we were on a boat. Mm-hmm. Um, which I don't even know why they do that on a boat other than like different like levels that you're staying on or whatever. But the fact that we had wristbands like we were at a concert for the week. Yeah. You know? That just sort of added a real layer of... And there was um, a threat at one point, right? They were like, if you lose this, it's fucking game over. Yeah, no, they were like, you have to pay $75 for another plastic wristband if this falls off and the ocean takes it. Sons of bitches. Yeah. Anyway, so we put on these wristbands, which did have like Mike Tyson tattooed patterns on them um, because it is the Hard Rock Resort. So it had to be badass. Mm -hmm. and uh sorry i feel like i cut you off and you're mad about it or something no no i was just thinking about the resort and the great time we had uh (laughs) we did i mean honestly i wanted to hate it i I seriously was going in there with this idea of like okay we're gonna tolerate this place yeah you five days you were really ready to i remember you kept apologizing about it because it's kind of it's kind of antithetical to the way i travel because like i said we absolutely saw nothing of the place we went to yeah we basically were we might as well have been in like the saudi arabian peninsula like it was like we could have been anywhere we were just in a gated community that was warm yeah um but it was kind of nice it was it was kind of great yeah, I mean, it was almost like if you were at the hospital, but the hospital was fun, you know? Yeah, I mean... Like, it's a world of its own. You're not you're not experiencing the DR. You're, it's for people that um, are frightened at the prospect of not knowing uh, the culture that they're in. But everybody was like, don't go off the resort. And I thought that they were saying, like, don't go off the resort because it's dangerous. But what I found out after the fact is there's just nothing around. Yeah. So they were like, just don't even think that you're going to see something because it's just resorts. So just yeah. don't go off the resort. And there was like a, a lot of highway plants. The resort was beautiful. <laughs> there was about 25 pools, uh, a lot of drunk people, a lot of sunburn people. A lot of families doing Zumba together. Yeah. Um, there was like with a DJ, a, a constant guy on a speaker getting people to like limbo and things like that. Yeah. And yeah. um, the food was not good, and it was not bad, but there was so much of it that you just didn't care. True. It was just like, it was fine, and there was lots of it. Yeah. Except that Italian place could have 
it seriously it kind of ruined the rest of the week for me. I think it was mainly that salmon. That salmon really turned me. Like I, I don't think I can eat another piece of salmon for a while. It, really? It grossed me. I remember out. watching you peel the skin off that salmon and being um, physically. I'm repulsed. getting nauseous right now thinking about that salmon. And honestly, people who really like salmon, I don't know if they would have known the difference. But it just it was too much for Andy. I'm I'm I'm. Losing. What about it was too much? It's just I I really do like salmon in theory. But there's all every time I eat salmon, I gotta peel the skin off, and then between the skin and the salmon, there's that gray stuff, and you gotta scrape That's that off. That's what I watched. That's what and I watched. And I hate that gray stuff. Ew! That was so gross. And it just—it's honestly, I'm like my stomach's a little turned right now. That's like when I eat an egg and the middle of it isn't cooked. Yes. I'm like, uh, well, this is the eggs ruined. If I eat a piece of chicken and I get like a piece of uh, something. Gristle hard yeah. in it i'm like well like i'm not eating any more of this i ca- i'm very i'm getting very picky with my meats yeah i think we did pretty good though we didn't like we never went crazy mm-hmm. other than the night that we got sick at the italian restaurant and i feel like we were trying to like just eat so that we what had do you mean, a guest what do you mean we us. never went crazy we never did like insane amounts of food like we had unlimited access to food and i oh, don't that's think not we, true andy no we did the whole we were I mean, I was never not eating. I never felt sick, is what I'm trying to say, other than the Italian night. Yeah. And I think the Italian night, we only ate that much because the guest, one of our party guests is a storyteller, and I wouldn't say she's great at telling stories. Because she's 85. She just tells you every single detail. Like She was 85, and she said, we we counted how many times she said the word female crab Mm -hmm. in a story. 17? 17 times something like that and that was one of the counting stories there was another story where we counted um i'm trying to think of hot something like that it was it was something yeah uh anyways so we just ate to try to kind of zone out of what she was saying and uh there was lots of um weird families there um there was it it was so bizarre because you basically always have to have like ones on you to tip it was like you never get a bill true but you all it was also like in terms of the clientele it was a lot of like midwestern alcoholic couples looking for a third yeah there was a lot of that there was also like a lot of like latin american kind of families where like you know like well to do and this was like their idea of like what a nice resort was which i think like maybe it was i don't know and then lastly, it wasn't a bad resort on Friday. It was actually great because we could order room service. Can you guys tell time. that we're mixed about the, our review of the Hard Rock Resort yet? Because we keep going back and forth and being like, it was great. The uh, room, well, it was this. The room service was great. Yeah. No, you can you can get. Well, the fact that you could get it without paying for it was great. That's Yeah. And then one thing I'll say this. The beach kind of sucked. Oh, the beach was gross, you guys. They had to clean up. Like, it had, like, five feet thick of seaweed every morning that they had to clean up. And sometimes it just came back, and then you were trying to, like, swim, and it was just five feet of, like, this seaweed mound. And, I mean, I'm not, like, against nature, but <laughs> I I didn't want to swim in seaweed. Can I say, though, um, one thing that really stood out to me on this trip was that how Andy's family is so much better. They're just so much more well-adjusted people than the family that I come from. Like your family, we went bowling one night and it didn't matter how shitty somebody bowled, everyone got a high five after they after their turn. And yeah. that was like, to me, the most foreign thing about the Dominican Republic was-, was seeing a family supporting each other even when they failed. And yeah. I for one, was shocked and appalled by that. I didn't know how to interact. I, I don't know how to play a game without desperately trying to win because my family, when we do things together, we're all waiting and watching for someone to fuck up so that we can tell them that they fucked up. That's the whole dynamic. Yeah, they don't really do that. You can't roast. There's not like a, like even fun, like, you know, like... 
what the hell was that? Yeah, you, know, you can't even thing. sort of like ruffle somebody a little bit. You can't do it. People's feelings were fragile in that moment. People were like, when people did bowl bad, they wore the sorrow on their face. Do you remember how sad everybody was the first game that I bowled? Yeah. Everybody was like, God, what's happening? <laughs> it was yeah. like, it's bowling, guys. Like, I don't bowl. I don't care about it. And they were just like... This is devastating. Yeah, they were really upset that Andy wasn't doing well. And then Andy was like, literally uh, took a child's assistance toy to bowl his turn. Like there was like a, a guitar because it's the hard rock. So everything is hard rock themed. And it was um, like half a guitar body. Yeah. And you put the ball at the top and then you just push a lever and it shoots the ball straight down the middle of the lane except that when Andy used it he still missed every single pin yeah and (laughs) instead of like laughing at that they were all like really upset yeah I should have put the bumpers up that would have been a good a good time to put the bumpers up they wanted you to put the bumpers up because they could not I mean it was like they couldn't watch you it was hard for them um but yeah, that was like really odd to me because my family's so the opposite of that, that I almost, um, I was like, well, I guess I have to hide my personality from these people for the rest of my life. Yeah. Tell them the story about what happened at the, uh, Teppanyaki restaurant with my dad. Oh yeah. We were at, uh, sort of like a Benihana situation, you know? Um, and we, I, Gary and I were chatting. Gary's my father. They know who Gary is. Oh, that's right. And we're chatting and, uh, Gary's like, you know, I, I was addicted to Coke in the eighties and I was like, oh my God, he's opening up to me. This is fucking great. I'm going to get some stories. We're going to talk about the dirt. I'm going to hear about, you know, how many women could have been Andy's mother. Not many. And, uh, so I was like, well, if you were addicted to Coke, you know, at least nothing happened. Like, at least you still have like cartilage in your nose. And he was like, uh, no, Coca-Cola. <laughs> and I was like, well, guess we. Uh, now he knows who I am. Yeah. G- now, you know who I really am. And um, that was how Gary got to know me on a real personal level by accident. Um. Has my anything happened like that with my dad for you? Have you ever like gaffed like that in front of my dad? I made a joke about hitting you and he got kind of serious. <laughs> like I was like making a joke about. I just almost choked uh, on my <laughs> nicotine loss. <laughs> like I was like joking about like it was like something like if Rosebud does this type of thing. And we were all doing it. And then I was like, well, I can just hit her. And he was like, well, well, that wouldn't be funny. And I was just like, oh, OK, well, I'm going to die. And uh, <laughs> place where Muammar Gaddafi went uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's funny because he used to yeah um I was like I thought we were all into hitting Rosebud um, yeah dad the f- um the funniest thing about the weekend to me though was Friday is when everybody from New York or Miami or wherever on the east coast flies down and it becomes like the weekend hang and so like all week it's like families and kind of like sunburnt rednecks and then all of a sudden it's like the bronx and queens and staten island show up right and it's a completely different vibe but they're intersecting so you do see like these kind of like midwestern like all american families and then you see like the you know like the corona queen uh riders crew uh you know trying to like while out at this like club that's really just like a wine bar because the club's closed yeah and then like like fathers with their daughters from kansas city like getting married for a third time that was the best we watched a family um taking wedding photos and we sat there for a solid like three minutes trying to figure out if the kids were indeed the The fiancés or the the fiancés or the husbands and whether or not they were posing with their boyfriends or their brothers yeah. on their laps. Okay. And one of the kids. Because we couldn't tell. I mean, the, they all looked exactly the same. Yeah, they were all just so corn fed. They were. De- it was definitely like a second or third wedding. That's like not a question. We yeah, all for sure. They, I mean, they, they were taking wedding photos with no shoes on for fuck's sake. Yeah. I, I mean, no offense if you guys did that. I'm sure you did it in a classy way. But good God, this was like just in the middle of a field. 
It wasn't even a field. It was like a patch of grass next to a walkway. It's it where I would take the dogs to pee if yeah, they exactly. were there with us. And uh, there was a kid that was part of this group. And I saw, I clocked him. I think I clocked him at the Mexican restaurant waiting. Oh, and yeah. I, you ran up to me and you were like, I've just seen the gr- the biggest piece of shit I've ever seen in my he life. Had, he was, he was kind of buff. He had like a puka shell necklace. His hair was like a bowl cut, but feathered in like a Farrah Fawcett way. Mm-hmm. And he just had that attitude of like Duke lacrosse player. Like I just, I wanted to push him off the side of a cruise ship. I He was, there yeah. would have been no loss to the world other than maybe a championship on like a third tier sport. That that would have been the only thing. Yeah. You know, just yeah. a, a, a number shown at the end of the season. Yeah. Um. So... And I saw him, and then I, I was like, yeah, he is he is trash. He's not... Uh, it wasn't his visceral, though. You know when you can tell somebody is a piece of shit just by looking at them, right? Yeah. And that's like a totally fine thing to do, uh, and not biased whatsoever. Um, anyway, yeah, we, we decided that that guy was our enemy. Mm-hmm. And we did nothing. We actually stood and watched our enemy take wedding photos, and we didn't fuck with him at all. It, it was, but nice he is—he was like one of the bros. That's yeah. the thing that bothered me about him. He was like the guys that are literally partying, partying on the rooftop while but we try to podcast. I do think the funny thing about the transition was that there was that whole family slash wedding vibe, and there was like also like a kind of a corporate retreat vibe happening, and then all of a sudden, all those people were exposed to like people in like thongs like smoking weed and like you know like twerking next to the pool it was just like a great confluence of people i loved it i loved the mixing and like the shock you know because my parents are such that like they literally think like they probably could get robbed at gunpoint on the resort like they yeah no they were acting i mean at one point um somebody went to go check out the gift shop and they were like, like they, it was what cracked me up was the words that your family chose to whisper. Oh yeah. Cause they would whisper anything. If they, if they said black or Brown or ethnic, they whispered it. Yeah. And I was like, this is the funniest shit I've ever, why are you whispering? You're in their country. My favorite thing (laughs) was when my dad, you're the foreigner. My dad literally, I don't know if I told you this. My dad said this to me. My dad said, you know, they really should speak better English. <laughs> and I was like, we're, it's their, it's, we're, we're, they we're, speak Spanish. It's their country. And he's like, I know, but it's, I'm having a hard time communicating with some of them. And I'm like, <laughs> in no point in your life did you think that maybe you should learn some of their language. <laughs> He does. He also wouldn't do that for like if he was in France, he wouldn't be like these people should speak. It's like right. definitely like a these people are brown. They should come to me. Yeah. My favorite part, though, is He's my, a colonialist. My dad, uh, when he got drafted into Vietnam, he got sent to these islands off of Portugal called the Azores, which are Portuguese speaking. And he took a couple classes. So he speaks a little Portuguese like he remembers a little bit. But key in this is that he remembers the word cerveja which is how you say cerveza, beer, in, in, in Portuguese. And he, we corrected him every single time he ordered a beer. Cerveja. And we said, Dad, it's cerveza. And you'd go, oh, okay. Yeah, I'm going to have a cerveja. And it, we were talking about this. There's something you hit an age where if you say a word wrong, <laughs> it is cement. It is, it is stuck it's in, in there. there. It is like a fossil in time. It yeah. is, if my mom, if I have a friend with an ethnic name, you know, yeah, like I had a Kojo growing mm-hmm. up, like mm-hmm. in my in my early twenties, I had a, a a good friend named Kojo, and it was it Kujo, Kofi, <laughs> whatever it was, it was never gonna come back. There was no getting it back, and it was it, never gonna be right. No, that's what I'm saying. Like I literally could have tied her to a chair, yeah, and just been like, let's say it, Anita. Say Kojo, and she just would have been like Kofi. <laughs> <laughs> just there's no way. And if they, you know, it's it, parents do it. It's whatever they get wrong. The quiet place, okay. The silent area. <laughs> it's gonna be the silent area. 
They could see the movie. The My title dog's could... name is Banjo. I'm calling him Bingo. Yeah, it's I'm great. calling him Bingo for the rest of his life. How's Bingo? How's Bangles? <laughs> <laughs> They're just, it's like, they say that you can teach a child as many languages as you want up mm-hmm. until like age five. And then their kind of language area of their brain kind of gets locked in. Yeah. Parents. There's an area, uh, I want to say around the age of 55, where once they get that word wrong, same thing. It is locked in. Yeah. And I got to say. God bless them. I've been getting calls from my, oh God, I've been, my family is exhausting. And every call that I've gotten from them this week, it's like, I, my mother's always been like this because she's so earnest and she's sweet and um, kind and just pretty much like the opposite of me. Uh in just about every way possible but i can't get off the phone with her without her crying Mm -hmm. like it doesn't matter what i i can keep the conversation positive you know uplifting and it doesn't matter how much levity i bring to a conversation she will start to cry at some point if we're talking about something she likes she will start to cry that's just beautiful I'm like, this is why I am the way I am because it's a rejection. When someone sucks all the emotional energy, yeah, in up in the room, and there's no room for you to like feel anything, you know, you start to uh, uh, react. First, you shut down, and then when other people are um, emoting, you start to resent them for it, and then you start to be mean. Yeah. Your mom, I love her to death, and I usually have a pretty good threshold for this, but your mom has this ability where it's like <laughs> we can just be asking her what the details of something, like very a very quick call. It yeah. could be a very quick call, and then she'll be like, but you know what? Today I went out to Salt Point, and I just saw the most beautiful rocks. And lighthouse. Oh, oh God, God, the lighthouse. I'm telling you, you remember that time that we went out to Salt Point when you were about 17 you know yeah and when, remember when you'd relapse it was yeah it was right before she'll bring up some traumatic event yeah and it's like yeah okay grandma, well grandma just passed and <laughs> we, we were all we were just still heartbroken but we all went down to salt point and <laughs> you know and then it's just like all of a sudden we're, we're all crying in the car <laughs> it's like what the fuck can we do uh, real quick? Can we do an impersonation of your mom uh, trying to make you take a time seriously? Like, a time seriously? Remember, like the game we were doing all weekend. Oh yeah, Bud. Will you be me? Okay. Okay. All right. Well, I'll I'll see you guys at dinner. Okay, Bud. Just so you know, dinner's at eight. I I'll be there. Okay, because I'm not messing around here. Okay. All right. You guys say that you're gonna be ready at eight. You gotta be ready at eight because if you're not ready at eight. Let me tell you something. Dinner is over. Okay, well, I'll... No one's eating ever again. Okay, I'll be... Okay, bud? I'm sure there'll be enough food if I show up at 8.05. No, it's not... Bud? <laughs> if you don't get there at 7.30, I swear to God, it's game over. <laughs> it's not going to happen. All right? You want to eat? You're going to have to wait at least a week. Because I'm not feeding you. I like it. When she goes, when she, because we do this every time we're with your mom and it's like a fun game that we all play. Yeah. But my favorite part is she goes, I know you think you're being funny right now. Yeah, this look, I know you guys think this is funny. It's not funny. Bud, can I tell you something? It's not funny. They'll throw your food out. They'll just, they'll make eye contact with you and they'll throw your food in the garbage. Yeah. And you know how many people work there? 15 people work there and they're going to lose their jobs. (laughs) If we don't show up at eight. That whole restaurant's going to shut down. And let me tell you something. That restaurant holds up this town. It holds up this town. <laughs> okay, I'll be there at 8. Yeah, it's a, it's a crisis. It's, it's never... It's one of my favorite things. It's never just a regular day in the life. You know, it's always gone with the wind. Um, but all in all, saying everything, going back through everything that we've all just spoken about, I'm pro all-inclusive now. I, it's yeah. not my ideal way to travel, but... It gets the job done. If you have elderly parents d- and a cruise ship, don't do it. I don't, I'm not a fan of the cruise ship. You got to get on and off the cruise ship. And on, let me tell you something. I don't like cruise ships at all. And also the getting on and off is actually quite laborious. There's a check-in and check-out system. There's ramps that are involved. 
your parents are going to be up at 530. Yeah. That's how early they're going to get up to get ready to just get off the boat. Yeah. Don't do that to them. Go to a, go to a resort. Go to a safe one. Hard Rock Punta Cana. Something in the Bahamas. Like there's a... There's that one that's at, uh, the what is it, the one where, like, the, the Disney Resort? I don't know. There's a comedy zone at one of them. Anyway. Oh, it's Atlantis. It's Atlantis. Just make it easy on them. Yeah. Don't even, d- let them pick the, ex- what what are they called now? Adventures? Uh, excursion. Excursion. Let them pick the excursions. Don't go. You don't go. Just Important let them. Important detail. Let them go. If they're passionate about that, go. But we wasted a lot of money we on did. excursions. We, that we really did. We went. We, we went to a. We went to the equivalent of like the the Uyghur internment camps for dolphins. That's what we went to. It, it was, was bad. It was sad. My brother got bit by a dolphin. It made me so upset. No cap. He got bit by a dolphin, and then they had to have like a powwow about possibly putting this dolphin down i really and do think do- there was a conversation about like do we kill this do dolphin, we kill the dolphin for grazing your thumb yeah and uh it's like the dolphin smiled at him his thumb was in the way and he was sliced open um in a very minor way it looked like a cat scratch and uh and you because you go on this dolphin thing and it's like swim with dolphins and what it is is you're on the perimeter of a pool it's dolphin slavery yeah. is what it is and a man yells at dolphins and coaxes them with fish to do a series of about seven tricks and it's the most upsetting thing i've i i walked out of there and i turned to andy and i'm like i'm so sad yeah <laughs> these dolphins and the the funniest part oh is yeah yeah he goes, the dolphins, uh, you know, in, in the wild, they only live to be about 25. In here, they live to be about 55. And I was like, these poor fucking dolphins. Yeah, have we to were live both just like, 30 is years? that better? Because th- the dolphins looked at us like, this is, the, this is hell. I'm in a nightmare. <laughs> they smiled like Charlie. Please kill me. <laughs> they smiled like Charlie. But like when you were giving Charlie a belly rub, but you could see in their eyes, deep in the iris, you could see just all the sadness of when they used to just ride waves and fucking chill out with Ariel. And they don't, I mean, sea I swear to God, I don't think those dolphins have ever seen the open sea. They've never seen the ocean. I really think that they were raised in captivity and just live to uh dance and smile and do applause tricks next time i go it made me so sad next time i go i'm gonna say i want a private dolphin swim i will pay extra for it listen no and i want to go in without a life jacket and i want to fight the dolphins that's all i want i want to have the dolphin you know how my therapist has told me that i need to punch pillows and cry yeah those dolphins need to attack a man and i am the man to do that this is what i'm gonna do i'm gonna go in i'm gonna say spare my husband real quick (laughs) just give me a second i'm gonna say i'll throw whatever he offers i'm gonna give you five hundred dollars more than that okay i'm gonna strap the dolphin to my back okay and then I'm going to swim. I'm going to find a way. Even if I have to Shawshank my way out of the aquarium into the ocean, mm-hmm. I will find a way to get that dolphin home. Yes. And then I will live out the rest of its days with it in the ocean. Teach it. Teach it my ways. Teach it how to fight. Yeah. In the ocean. Yeah. You know? I want to teach a, I want to teach a dolphin to be an orca. I want to I want to free willy the dolphins. Yeah. Anyway, Definitely. that's pretty much probably what every millennial who's ever visited that place has said. But I do feel horrible about no because it, there were some going. people that showed up. There's a there's a very common outfit that I will say this. I'm going to go out on a limb and I'm going to make a giant generalization. Mm-hmm. But if you wear like a hot like a very impractical swimsuit mm-hmm. with like for some reason a, a big res- resort style mm-hmm. is to wear a kind of skimpy decorative swimsuit and then for some reason you you class it up by putting on sheer pants and a shirt it's from, like from rainbow yeah it's just like you put on pants that are see-through they're just white like what mesh mm-hmm. i guess yeah see-through mesh if if you wear that and you have like yeezy slides on you don't care about the plight of the dolphins. You don't even realize that the dolphins aren't robots, probably. Okay. Well, that's yeah. No, that that's probably fair. Um, you're ju- you just want to have a good time. 
Yeah. You're not, you're not really overthinking it. Yeah. I mean, and, and God bless them. That must be a wonderful place to be. That must be like me when you guys, I got a minor surgery this week. He's talking about a specific couple that was at the dolphin excursion, by the way. And he had a real problem with this lady's pants. But, but then I saw Dave Mazzoni wearing the pants. And that looked fun. But Dave also, Mazzoni made him look good. He's woke. He wasn't there at the dolphin plantation. <laughs> but I'll say this. I got a minor surgery this week, and they gave me uh, some substances that uh, reminded me of what it's like to be a child and to not have a care in the world. And that must be what it's like to be a stupid person at a resort. Yeah. Yeah. Like you're just living on Percocet. Yeah. Um, okay. So we have some bad advice questions that we want to get into uh, real quick. We got a bunch of bad advice qu- questions, and you guys have been great about writing those to us, if I don't text you back right away, just know I will get back to it on the pod, okay? While she's looking those up, I do want to remind you guys that for VIBs, there is a VIB Bistro June 27th at 6 p.m. Eastern. All you have to do is join the VIB tier. Otherwise, if you're not a patron yet, it's only $5 a month. You get an extra episode. www.patreon.com forward slash find your beach and um we have merch we have new merch we've put it up for the vibs this week um it'll be available for all for the other other tiers next week but the vibs do get a discount so we had to make it available to to them first um Okay, so text us your bad advice questions, 917-540-8395. You can text into us anytime, day or night. Um, So I got, let's see, this one's from Justin. Looking for some bad advice. My younger brother just turned 26 today. We don't talk that much, and I have no idea what to get him for his birthday. What bad advice do you have to offer in terms of presents for your brother? I'm going to say... Let's offer him a first class ticket to uh, the rooftop where the bros are hanging out and now blasting their fucking music. He's 26. He's asking for a bad advice birthday present. Mm -hmm. I would say it's some kind of... The brother's 26. Yeah. Monthly subscription plan that he's going to be roped into. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe a bad... Razors? Maybe a bad streaming service? I was going to say razors, because that'll just fill his house with just useless oh, razors. Oh, you want to fuck with his confidence? Get him a hymns. Get him a hymns thing, so he's getting the finasteride and the shampoo. Propecia. Propecia. And just Viagra. Be like, hey, it's never too early to start. Yeah. Just Even if like, he's not balding, be like, I'm seeing it, maybe you aren't seeing it, but yeah. it's... Honestly, it looks like certain angles. It looks like the edge of the Amazon up there. It's not great. It's not great. People are cutting into it. Um, um, also, you could buy them like you can go onto eBay and you can find a lot of weird shit. One time I bought uh, a whale penis for somebody. You can do a lot of different, you know, just go weird with it. Get a fossil. Yeah. 26. One of the worst years of my life. Put that on the card. You know, this is going to be happy a bad birthday. One. This one's going to be a bad one. OK. You know. Just hold on to your seat. Grip it hard. Um, Okay, this one's from Holly. Uh, Dating stories. Ooh. Andy, you requested these. I requested dating stories. So make sure you listen and you don't uh, revert into your dissociative state. Mm -hmm. Um, Hi, Andy and Rosebud. First, I love you guys. We love you too. Thank you, Holly. Here's one of my dating stories. I'd matched with someone on a dating site, and after a month of talking, we decided to both drive two hours to meet in the middle. Whoa. That's huge. Yeah. I need to know what dating app this was, because it's going to... Hey, shut up. It's going to tell so much. Hey, mouse. 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 She's jealous. She's really jealous. She hates when other people are dating, and like somebody that she isn't dating, because she gets jealous, because she just really sweats being sweated. Mouse. Um, this is not your t- time to shine. Okay. Um, drive two hours to me in the middle. We met at a sports bar. Everything was going fine and awkwardly as a first date does until his until he nonchalantly took his teeth out and placed them on the bar top. Then proceeded to gum his burger. No forewarning. No mention of it. How does one handle this? Ask about the missing grill. Ghost the Gummer. Thanks, guys. Holly. Okay, okay I'm going to take this. I'm going to take this. Ghost the Gummer, I'm going to take this. Points for Ghost the Gummer. Love, yeah, love that. Um, 
actually that's a great like sticker or something um or podcast yeah ghost the gummer um i went on a date once where a man bit into a piece of pizza and his tooth fell out and he started crying (laughs) okay now he ran Uh. he ran to the bathroom in tears and um I ate the pizza because I figured it's pizza. He's not going to want this now. Did he, he get his teeth back? No, he just came back from the bathroom but with his tooth. did he get tooth. the one that he broke? He put it in his pocket. Oh God, you got to put it in milk. You just dummy. sadly put it in his pocket and cried. Um, and he was bleeding everywhere. Uh, I should mention that. Um, what kind of pizza were you eating? It wasn't hard. Okay. I really, the pizza was good. He just so had a feeble tooth. He just had feeble bones. Wow. So. Was he a petite, kind of weak man? No, he wasn't. I just thought maybe he had a vitamin deficiency. I, you know, he that lacked. Sounds like a, that sounds like he's like roiding out or something. He lacked good color. I'll say that. Okay. And um, I do think he probably had a drinking problem. Ooh. Um, maybe a B deficiency. Yeah. Anyway, so. His tooth falls out. He starts crying, puts the tooth in his pocket, walks to the bathroom sadly. I sat there for about three minutes and I thought, well, I guess I should eat this. And I ate it. And then he came back and he was mad at me for eating his pizza, Um, which I thought was pretty ballsy of him. But if I were you and the man had his teeth on the table and hadn't warned me, I would take those teeth put them in my pocket and leave i'd run yeah i was actually thinking the exact same thing i was thinking how funny would it be to say hold on one second grab the teeth and run yeah or better yet take the teeth put them in your hand and start doing your inner monologue about how weird it is i can't believe he didn't tell me his teeth came out before the meal that would have i mean because honestly like obviously you don't want to go on a second date that's like he's just ixnayed the whole situation by not bringing up the fact hey i have falsies it's kind of uncomfortable but i have a good sense of humor about it yeah there's no second date coming so you might as well make sure that he doesn't think there's a second date right by absolutely ridiculing him yeah just destroying him from the inside out you know, um, I, I hate to do this, but I do need to get off the pod right now because Why? Um, I'm having very bad itching. OK, so I'm going to need to go away from here, <laughs> but <laughs> it's not any particular place. It's where my minor surgery has happened. And uh, <laughs> if you're a patron, you can find out more about that next week. But until then, join the Patreon, yeah, www.patreon.com forward slash find your beach. We got a whole bunch of content about this surgery coming to you guys. Um, all right. We love you. Uh, wash on. your hands. Don't lick your lover's eyeballs. Don't spit in their mouths unless it's a committed monogamous relationship. Also, I'll be in, uh, I'll be, where will I be? DC improv. Um, the weekend of next July weekend. 8th, 9th and 10th and 11th is yeah. when she will be there. That's my birthday weekend. She's skipping my birthday. It's actually 8th, 9th and 10th. Uh, but no, uh, seriously, more important than anything that Rosebud's ever said is don't touch me, uh, is I am recording an album August 18th through 21st. The 21st will be the night that I'm recording, but I need to sell it out. You guys, I need to make sure that we just jam pack this thing. So if you're anywhere near, the bay area august 21st or any of the days leading up to it please come on out support your boy i'm doing my second album hell yeah it's it's comeback season and listen i hate to say this i really do but he's pretty funny you guys so all right we love you bye bye